go ahead and pray and we'll get started. Uh, Second Corinthians six is where we left off. So that's where we'll pick up this morning. If you wanna follow along and I'll pray. Father, we thank you this morning that we can again come and uh, center ourselves around your word and gather around it together. And uh, we would ask you for the grace of um, making it feel like we are together, even physically in the same room around your word. And um, we're thankful for your spirit that makes us one. And we're thankful for Jesus, who um, is our one Lord, our one Savior, and that um, God, we have the gift of, of your speech, your word, your, your, um, your scriptures given to us. So this morning, Lord, would you work in our hearts and minds and shape them as we read, help us to, to concentrate, even though we might be sleepy and a little foggy this morning. Would your word break through, we pray. Would your spirit break through with it and, and shape us, form us, um, draw us closer and closer to you. And we do pray, God, that your whole church um, would, would find themselves centered around your word as our lifeline and as our anchor in this world and in the circumstances in which we find ourselves. We pray all this in your name. Amen. All right, so 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Working together with him then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in a favorable time, I listen to you. And in a day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well-known, as dying and behold, we live as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making ri many rich, as having nothing yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak excuse me, I speak as to children, widen your hearts also. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers, for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. 
We have taken advantage of no, of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are a, that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. I am acting with great boldness toward you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort in all of our affliction. I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came into Macadamia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but also by his comfort with which he was comforted by you. As he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, for me so that I rejoice still more, for even if I had made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, for I see that that letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieved into repenting, for you felt a godly grief so that you suffer no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment, at every point you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it is not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that the earnestness for us might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted, and besides our comfort, we rejoiced still more at the joy of Titus because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For whatever bo boasts I made to you about you, I was not to put shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true. And his affliction for you is even greater as he remembers the obedience of all of you all. How you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. We want you to know, brothers, in all the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in his severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, accordingly we urge Titus that as he has had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that you love also is that your love is also genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in that matter, I give my judgment. This benefits you. You a year ago started not only to do this work, but also to desire to do it. So now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness is desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has, not according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance 
at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little, little had no lack. But thanks be to God, he put into the heart of Titus the same earnest care I have for you. For he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, he is going to you of his own accord. With him we are sending the brothers, who is famous among all the churches, for his preaching to the gospel. And not only that, but he has appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our goodwill. We take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that is being administered by us. For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are messengers of the church, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and are boasting about you to these men. Now it is superfluous for us to write to you about the ministry for the saints. For I know your readiness of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaius, Achaius has been ready since last year and your zeal has stirred up most of them but i am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may not prove empty in this matter so that you may be ready as i said you would be otherwise if some macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready we will be humiliated to say nothing of you for being so confident so I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift that you have promised so that it may be ready uh, as a willing gift, not as an uh, exaction. The point of this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whosoever sows bountifully will also re re reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, he has distributed freely he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seeds for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surprise surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible, inexpressible gift. I, Paul, myself, entreat you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, I who am humble when face to face with you, but bold toward you when I am away. I beg of you that when I am present, I may not have to show boldness with such confidence as I count on showing against some who suspect us of walking according to the flesh. 
For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that just as he is Christ's, so also are we. For even if I boast a little too much of our authority, for which the Lord God, the Lord gave for building you up and not for destroying you, I will not be ashamed. I do not want to appear to be frightened, frightening you with my letters. For they say, his letters are weighty and strong, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech of no account. Let such a person understand that what we say by letter, we, when absent, we do when present. Not that we dare to classify or compare ourselves with some of those who are commending themselves, but when they measure themselves by one another, one another and compare themselves with one another, they are without understanding. But we, are, but we will not boast beyond limits but will boast only with regard to the area of influence God assigned to us to reach even to you. For we are not overextending ourselves as though we did not reach you. For we were the first to come all the way to you with the gospel of Christ. We do not boast beyond limit in the labors of others, but our hope is that as your faith increases, our area of influence among you may be greatly enlarged so that we may preach the gospel in lands beyond you without boasting of work already done in another's area of influence. Let the one who boasts boast in the Lord, for it is not the one who commands, commends himself who is approved, but the one whom the Lord commends. I wish you would bear with me in a little foolishness. Do bear with me, for I feel a divine jealousy for you since I betrothed you to one husband to present you as a pure virgin to Christ. But I am afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For as someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it readily enough. Indeed, I consider that I am not in the least inferior to these super apostles. Even if I am unskilled in speaking, I am not so in knowledge. Indeed, in every way, we have made known this plain to you in all things. Or did I commit a sin in humbling myself so that you might be exalted because I preached God's gospel to you free of charge. I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and was in need, I did not burden anyone for the brothers who came from Macedonia supplied my need. So I refrained and I will refrain from burdening you in any way. As the truth of Christ is in me, this boasting of mine will not be silenced in the regions of Acacia. And why? Because I do not love you? God knows I do. And what I do, I will continue to do in order to undermine the claim of those who would like to claim that in their boasted mission, they work on the same terms as we do. For such men are false apostles, deceitful workmen, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no surprise if his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. Their end will correspond to their deeds. I repeat, let no one think me foolish, but even if you do, accept me as a fool 
so that I too may boast a little. What I am saying with this boastful confidence, I say not with the Lord's authority, but as a fool. Since many boast according to the flesh, I too will boast. For you gladly bear with fools, being wise yourselves. For you bear it if someone makes a slaves of you, or devours you, or take adva takes advantage of you, or puts on airs, or strikes you in the face. To my shame, I must say, we were too weak for that. But whatever anyone else does, but whatever anyone else dares to boast of, I am speaking as a fool. I also dare to boast of that. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they offspring of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? I am a better one. I am talking like a madman with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings, and often near death. Five times I received at the hands of the Jews the forty lashes lest one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. A night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in dangers from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers, in toil and hardship through many sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure. And apart from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of my anxiety for all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is made to fall? and I am not indignant. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. The God and Father of the Lord Jesus, he who is blessed forever, knows that I am not lying. At Damascus, the governor under King Eretus was guarding the city of Damascus in order to seize me, but I was let down in a basket through a window in the wall and escaped his hands. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was caught up into paradise. Whether in body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast, but on my own behalf, I will not boast except of my weaknesses. Though I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth, but I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being coming conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I have been a fool. You forced me to it, for I ought to have been commended by you. For I was not at all inferior to these super apostles, even though I am nothing. The signs of a true apostle were performed among you with utmost patience, with signs and wonders and mighty works. For in what you were less favored than the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not burden you, forgive me this wrong. Here for the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be a burden. For I seek not what is yours, but you. 
For children are not obligated to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. I will most gladly spend and be spent for your souls. If I love you more, am I to be loved less? But granting that I myself did not burden you, I was crafty, you say, and got the better of you by deceit. Did I take advantage of you through any of those whom I sent to you? I urged Titus to go, and I sent the brother with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not act in the same spirit? Did we not take the same steps? Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? It is in the sight of God that we have been speaking in Christ, and all for your upbuilding, beloved. For I fear that perhaps when I come, I may find you not as I wish, and that, would, and that you may find me not as you wish, that perhaps there may be quarreling, jealousy, anger, hostility, slander, gossip, conceit, and disorder. I fear that when I come again, my God may humble me before you, and I may have to mourn over many of those who sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual immorality, and sensuality that they have practiced. Good morning. This is the third time I am coming to you. Every charge must be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. I warned those who sinned before in all the others, and I warned them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not spare them. Since you seek proof that Christ is speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you but is powerful among you, for he was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves, or do you not realize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you? unless indeed you fail to meet the test, I hope you will find out that we have not failed the test. But we pray to God that you may not do wrong, not that we may appear to have met the test, but that you may do what is right, though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. Your restoration is what we pray for. For this reason, I write these things while I am away from you, that when I come, I may not have to be severe in my use of the authority that the Lord has given me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for the restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Thank you all for joining and for reading. I think we'll stop there since we're at the end of a book and um, we're getting into the epistles now that are just quite a bit shorter than these first ones, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and on into the rest that are probably, we're probably able to read all of those in one sitting or maybe even a couple in one sitting. So I think tomorrow we'll begin with Galatians and uh, read through that book together um, and just kind of go book by book um, through the rest of the epistles. So uh, let's spend some time then in prayer and responding to um, about three chapters of Paul defending himself, which is interesting. I almost read that and think, man, if if he'd written that today, I think he probably would have pressed pause before he sent that and maybe thought about it for you know because he's a lot of boasting, boasting, boasting. Um, it's just a really interesting passage of his conversation here with the Corinthians. Lets us into his heart quite a bit. So 
Um, let's pray in response to what we read this morning and also just any other prayer requests. Let's continue to pray for Jerry Bronson and uh, Lonnie Gray and others uh, just to have some physical needs and any other prayer requests you'd like to pray. And I will close uh, after some, some quiet. Let's pray. Father, what a privilege we have to come before you today. The fact that we have your word. Thank you that we have the technology to be able to be separate and still together. I just thank you for the way you are strengthening us each day. Paul told about how you strengthened him, helped him through many difficulties. We might think that things are difficult for us today, but none of us are being beaten. None of us are being shipwrecked. I don't think any of us are hungry. Lord, I just thank you for the way that you are meeting our needs. And I just pray for those who are in authority over us as they guide us through this time of social isolation. Give them wisdom to know when and how this uh, separation can be lifted and that we can once more be living a, the more normal life. And Lord, I just pray for those in our church that have special needs because of this. Help us so that we might be alert to those needs. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows Bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. Lord, as we see that um, the saints would contribute to those that were suffering, and that Paul would take those offerings to those others that were in need. I just pray, Lord, that you would help us to be bountiful and to give generously to those that might be hurting, Lord. And especially as we look around at our neighbors and those around us and, and those in our church that might need something, help us to be aware of that and to share with one another. And those that are hurting, Lord, I pray that their needs will be supplied. Those that don't have work, those that um, their businesses are just on the brink of totally crashing. I pray for them, Lord. Just ask that you'd be with them. And I do lift up Jerry Bronson today as she has an appointment at nine o'clock this morning with an infusion in band. And I pray that medication will help her. Lord, we pray that this um, sickness will not come back full force, but that it will be arrested and the medication will work and most of all, your healing hand will just be upon her and the peace of God that passes understanding will surround her this day in Jesus' name. Father, good morning. Thank you for today. Another day to live as unto you. And 
uh, as I read uh, this morning earlier in John 17, Lord Jesus, when you prayed that uh, you prayed that we would not be taken out of the world, but that we would remain here, but spared from evil. Let's pray today as we go along with the, all the dealings of this world with maybe pain or excitement or uh, fears or goals and uh, just pray lord that we would do it by your spirit and be able to look forward to those eternal things that you have promised and as paul talked about this morning in corinthians that uh, we would test ourselves we would look at our lives and evaluate lord i think it's because the the things that are in front of me that I can see are, uh, they just seem more real and more uh, maybe to be afraid of or to seek after and pray, Lord, that you would empower each one of us by your spirit to uh, trust you, that gift of faith that we could have our confidence on you who never change. And I am so thankful, Lord, that you you never change. And just even clear back when uh, the scripture, when Paul was writing, it was it was the same. And all the technology and uh, things around us that change <clears throat> so <clears throat> so quickly, but Lord, you never change. And and I really value that that uh, stability. And thank you. So. Pray in Jesus' name. Thanks. Jesus, uh, we just thank you for this time to come together, um, even virtually, to be in your word and be together in community as brothers and sisters in Christ and you who um, just seek to know you better, seek to seek your will in everything we do, especially um, during this time of uncertainty. God, I just thank you for, um, for your word. God, I just can't imagine not having it, not knowing it, not being able to come to you. And I just praise you for being the God of the universe. And I praise you for being the God over this virus. And I praise you for being the God over all, over all God. And um, we just pray that you would um, be um, faithful to us, God. And we pray that you would also give us um, direction and um, especially those making difficult decisions and for those who are um, sick um, and scared, Lord, I just pray that you would be with them. I pray that you would bring healing to our nation and to our world, God. I just thank you again for who you are, for the fact that we can come to you, um, that you are not some far off deity that is... Um, uh, does not want to be in relationship with us, God. We are thankful you are who you are and you are who you say you are in your word. And um, I just rest in that, God. And I just thank you that we can know you and that we can follow you and that we can talk to you. And I just pray, God, that you would just remain with us and um, give us wisdom and guidance, Lord. Father, I thank you for all these prayers, and I agree along with my brothers and sisters um, with these. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for your presence. We do um, We come to a place of lamenting and sorrow over what is happening in the world and the pain and 
suffering and loneliness that many are going through, the loss that many are experiencing. And uh, God, we want to be able to empathize and suffer with them and cry out to you, Lord, to remember your, your faithfulness, your goodness, your grace on, um, on your creation and to extend that. I do pray for us as a church, Lord, that we would not miss the, this time as a unique time in our lives to, um, to, as Paul said, to test ourselves, to, uh, to reassess, to reevaluate who we are and what we're about and what you want us to be doing and how you want us to be loving and um, fulfilling the mission that you'd have for us in this world. And not in our own strength, God, I think of the words of Paul, which are so significant for all of our lives, that when we are weak, then we are strong because your power is made perfect in our weakness. And so, um, Lord, help us to, um, to not boast in all of our strengths or the things that we're good at or the things that would bring us attention, but that we would boast that when we are weak, then you get the glory and you, um, you are seen as the one who comes through and who, who saves. And um, Lord, it's no accident that you've made the cross the centerpiece of your wisdom in this world that we, we see what seems like weakness, but what is truly your power and your strength. And Lord, we look to the cross this morning. A crucified Savior as our salvation, as our wisdom, as our righteousness, as our strength, as our comfort. Um, and so may our eyes be turned to you today. And may we direct others to you as we, as we tell them of your works and your salvation and your kindness toward us. I too would lift up uh, Jerry Bronson this morning. I lift up Lonnie Gray. I lift up um, those who are battling cancer, Ellie Reynolds and Don Sawchuk, Jenny Groshong, Kathy Noer, and others, uh, Lord, any others who are um, just physically experiencing suffering, I pray that you would be with them. Pray for Dick and Mickey Rogers as they um, are just separated during this time. Um, and pray for peace and comfort for them. Uh, and Lord, lift up all these prayers, knowing that you are the one who answers and looking to your grace to meet us where we're at. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all. Good to see you this morning.